All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, this is part six of the Bezier graph series. And today we are going to be creating randomization on a per blade basis to the grass shape. Uh, at the end of the day, there's not any point in having a procedural grass blade if they all just look the same, right? So this is going to take care of that. Now there are a lot of different ways that you could drive the values for our curvature and our midpoint that are defining the shape of our blade. You could use a texture uh, or a noise similar to the wind, right? And that could drive the values uh, using a texture sample. We could um, use a mathematical pseudo random or random per blade hash function uh, that's determined in the material. Uh, the problem with both of those options are they have a runtime cost associated with them uh, to generate more random values. And of course, we do also have a random value built into all of our instances just by default with the per instance random. This is a zero to one value that is on a per instance basis. So theoretically, we could use that. The problem is that we already have used that. We've used it both to define our wind UVs, and we've also used it to define the color of our blade of grass. Uh, and you can reuse the same random value more than once if you're very careful about how you apply it. Right. Nobody's going to be able to draw a correlation between the color of the grass and the offset from the wind texture sample because they can't see the wind texture sample. Right, So um, that, that connection will be impossible to make. But if we use the same random value to define the curvature and the midpoint of the grass, uh, we would not get an infinite number of, like, well, we, we would get an infinite number, perhaps you could say, but we wouldn't get discrete variations, right? The um, the curvature and the midpoint would be connected to each other. A specific value of curvature would always have a specific value for the midpoint. So we would not get you know, a very wide variation uh, in how our grass can look. Uh, and also, if we use that same value for the color, then every specifically shaped piece of grass would have a similar color. And these are the types of things that people will notice a connection in, and we won't get the kind of randomness that we want. So how can we get more per instance randoms? Well, that's where PCG can uh, come in to help us out. So I've added some stuff to our PCG graph. Uh, but first, I want to talk about the static mesh spawner node here, because I've made a few changes to it to, to suit this video and future videos. So first, we want to change our mesh selector type from the default, which is weighted, to by attribute. This will come in handy later, and it's better just to get it out of the way since it will um, reset some of our settings. So I just want to revisit again, when you change this, you will need to um, redo some things, right? We'll need to re-disable ray tracing. We'll need to re-disable collisions. And I didn't mention it last time, but you'll probably want to disable um, distance field lighting as well, effect distance field lighting. Um, with these settings disabled um, after changing this, uh, we should be back to where we were, but we need to define the mesh now, which we'll talk about later. Uh, so there's a couple of things that we are doing, but all of them are based off of adding attributes that our static mesh spawner can read. So with the mesh, we're saying add an attribute with the add attribute node, not to be mistaken with the add attribute math operation node. There are two add attribute add, add nodes. Make sure you're using the right one. So we're taking add attributes and we are naming that attribute mesh and we are using the create attribute node and we are defining a soft object path and selecting our, our mesh, right? And what this is going to do is create this column here, mesh. And then our static mesh spawner is looking for that attribute saying, okay, well, I'm defining what mesh I'm spawning by the attribute named mesh, right? So we need to make sure that that attribute is in our data set and it defines our plane or our, you know, our grass blade. So that will make sure that we're able to spawn our grass while using this um, mesh selector by attribute. The next thing we need to change is the instance data packer type. By default, there will not be a data packer, but we want to set this data packer to by attribute. And the by attribute will allow us to define additional attributes that could be passed to our uh, mesh as per instance custom data. So I'm going to create and add two attributes. So just like before, I'm creating an attribute and then adding it to our data set. 
This time I'm naming it rand0 and rand1. And we're also taking the attribute noise. So this is saying take the last attribute that exists, which will be rand0 in this specific case. Right, we can see that rand0. Take that last column and set it to a value between 0 to 1 using a noise function. And then you know there's a particular seed for that noise. Then we're doing it again and we're setting another noise function. Make sure it has a different seed, otherwise you'll get the same random values. And that will defeat the purpose, right? The whole purpose is we could have unique, distinct random values. Um, and then if we look at this, now you'll see that we have two sets, or well, a set of two different random values, right? And then our, for instance, data packer is looking for, you would hit this plus sign here to add an element, and you can look for the attributes that you want. So I've, I've added two elements here and I've named it rand0 and rand1. So it's saying look at this part of the data and pack this value into the mesh as data that it can read or that its material can read. So uh, those are the changes that we've made here so far, right? So we've set our mesh selection to be by attributes and we've also set our data packer to be by attributes. So we can pass data to our mesh. And that data, again, is a random value. So we can access that data with this per instance custom data node. I've got one set to zero for its index here, data index, that's rand zero. And I've got this one set to an index of one, that's rand one. So this is just putting it in, you know, in order there, index zero, index one, you can see that. Then uh, we can use this to drive a lerp, right? So here, if we look at our um, material, I've got a lerp, and I'm saying the curvature minimum value and the curvature maximum value uh, will be these figures. And here I've got the minimum midpoint value and the maximum midpoint value will be these figures. And these um, random values between 0 and 1 will lerp between my defined values of 0.2 to 0.8. You could also set this up in a different way. Like for example, here's my midpoint and here's the uh, randomness or range of values I want to have. So I could say 0.5 with a randomness of 0.5. So what this would do is give me a value of between 0.25 and 0.75. So if you kind of just want to set a midpoint and then a randomness amount, you could do that. Or we can do this and just explicitly set our minimums and maximums. So here we have our old hard-coded midpoints and curvatures, and that's just coming over here with named reroute nodes, uh, so we can free up some space. Uh, and we can simply just take our minimums and maximums we've defined with the random value that's generating the alpha for our lerps and pass these through. So I guess first I'm going to randomly set the midpoint, right? So here we have everything uniform. I'm going to randomly set the midpoint. And already things are looking a little more random, right? Some grass blades have their midpoint towards the tip. Some of them have it towards the base. Doesn't look quite as uniform anymore, but we can still see that they're all curving about the same amount, right? Now let's go ahead and apply the randomness to our curvature. Now we have some grades blades of grass that are highly curved and some blades of grass that are highly straight. So here's a very curved one, and here's a very straight one. Uh, and so you can define these ranges as an artist. You can say, I want grass that has you know, no curve up to a very curvy, or I only want this kind of middle range. Um, so you can control how random your uh, grass shape is and what kind of look you want. And the rest of the um, randomness is coming from our transform point for now. Theoretically, this could be defined in the material as well if you wanted, but uh, for me, it makes sense to define this in, in PCG for now. So we have our scale and our rotation randomization. So that can define the length of the blade of grass, the width, and the, you know, the positions, of course, um, can all be randomly defined in PCG. So that doesn't necessarily need to be taking up logic inside of our material. So uh, just to show you, these random values. I'm going to go ahead and set this up with just a quick debug visualizer here. So here you can see we have um, a bunch of 
red, green, and yellow values. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and um, make another append, right? And then grab our per instance random. Put that in here. Now you can see how thoroughly random this is, right? We've got all sorts of different colors, right? So basically this is having three different random values creating a kind of a vector noise, right? So we can create really as many random values as we practically might need. I believe there is a limit to the number of um, custom, uh, per instance, custom data values you can have. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's set to a hard cap of 32. But 32 is a lot, right? Um, so we might be using this more in the future for some additional features. Uh, but sparing one or two of these um, for random values is a pretty big win in the sense that now we can have a random values being calculated when the PCG graph is generated rather than every frame in our material. So this um, randomization costs very little to add and, um, you know, and gives us the look that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this stuff here. We don't need any of that. Uh, and yeah, I think that is probably all for this video. Uh, and we will continue here um, in the next one talking a bit more about, again, um, adding more variation to the grass and um, you know, optimizations, things like that all to come. So uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.